Four people arrived at the Kennedy Space Center today to prepare for a historic but really risky mission. That mission has been dubbed Polaris Dawn. The crew is set to leave next Monday on a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule and spend five days in space. The goal is to try to conduct the first ever private spacewalk, but that's not all. The crew is aiming to travel higher altitudes than the Apollo program, cross paths with a radioactive belt, and test some new SpaceX suits. They're pretty cool, too. CBS News space consultant Bill Hartwood joins me now. Uh, Bill, great to see you. So what are some of the risks of this mission? Let's get that out of the way first. Well, sure. They're a little bit higher than they would normally be for a SpaceX Crew Dragon mission, you know, the kind of flights that carry astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Um, as you say, they're going to go higher than anyone has gone since the Apollo program. Of course, the Apollo crews went further. They went all the way to the moon. Uh, but these guys are going to get up to an altitude of about 870 miles. That's well above the altitude of the International Space Station, which orbits at around 260 miles. Um, and so they are going to be exposed to the Van Allen radiation belts. Uh, but remember, this is a short duration flight. It's only going to last about five days. So the radiation that they will receive during those five days is still much less than the crew on the International Space Station gets over six months. Uh, so, yeah, it's more risky, I think, than a standard SpaceX Crew Dragon mission, but not all that much. And then when you throw in the spacewalk, well, that's a different ball game. You know, you've got a brand new suit, as you mentioned, <laughs> uh, never been tried in the vacuum of space before. Uh, so that's going to be quite exciting to watch. And they're kind of exciting to look at. What more can you tell us about those special suits uh, from SpaceX? Well, you know, actually, SpaceX designed these themselves. They're air-cooled. They don't have that complex liquid cooling system that the old suits that NASA uses uh, has. And even, even with that, uh, they tell us that uh, these suits are good to go out, you know, in broad sunlight up in orbit or in the, in the shadow of the Earth when the temperatures plunge to a couple of hundred degrees below zero. They say they're going to be fine. Uh, and remember, they'll be connected to their spacecraft at all times okay. with oxygen umbilicals uh, mm -hmm. to keep anything from going wrong. What is, again, the mission hoping to learn from all of this and, and what comes next? Well, they think that, uh, you know, testing these spacesuits is a really big deal. You know, SpaceX has very ambitious plans uh, well beyond NASA to explore the moon and on to Mars someday. They say they need new spacesuits to handle the, the number of people they envision uh, going out into space someday. And they want to start testing the materials, the procedures, you know, how you train for these spacewalks. It's very different from the way NASA does business. This is their first step in that regard. So it's a fairly modest step. They're not going to float free of the spacecraft, you know, out there on their own. They'll still uh, be anchored to the spacecraft during their spacewalk. Uh, but it's still pretty uh, unusual. Remember, only the United States government Russia and China are able to do this sort of thing. This is the first time private citizens uh, will attempt to do it themselves. Right. And I have a feeling people will be using uh, those SpaceX suits in a Halloween costume this October. Bill Hartwood, thank you so much. Good thing.